Hi everyone, welcome to the Bridge of Hope. My name is Sarah, and we're so happy to have you with us this morning. These are your weekly announcements. First of all, we wanted to welcome all our new visitors. We're so happy you're here with us today. Here at the Bridge, we want you to know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference. If this is your first time here, we want to get to know you better, and we do that by you filling out a Connect card. Once you fill out your Connect card, just take it to the welcome desk and someone will be there to greet you with a small gift. Once again, thank you for being with us this morning. Just a reminder, the school supply drive is going on right now. You can find bins to drop off your supplies in the cafe. We will end that school supply drive on July 31st. Next Monday, July 27th, from 10 a.m. to noon, we're gonna have our food pantry. We will have plenty of food and volunteers, so if you or anyone you know that is in need, please come to the food pantry on July 27th from 10 to 12. I'm so excited to announce that on August 2nd, small group signups will start. This is an incredible way to join with fellow believers in a small, comfortable setting. Once again, those small group signups are August 2nd. We're so excited to see what God's going to do this fall. Well, that's your weekly announcements. If you missed anything, check with someone in the cafe for additional information. Once again, we're so happy to have you with us this morning. Now let's worship. Good morning, church. Stand up, say hello to somebody. We're so glad that you're here this morning. It's been a long week, but we're here to praise the Lord this morning, to lift up his name. He was worthy all week, and he is worthy today. He was worthy yesterday to praise, and he's worthy to praise today. Just get a, get a praise in your heart this morning. Let's thank him right now in prayer. Father, God Almighty, we thank you so much, Lord, for today. Father, we thank you for your goodness in our lives, Lord. Father, we thank you that you have us here today, that you've given us the freedom to be here, the freedom to come in and praise your name this morning. Father, express ourselves to you, Lord. Father, you're our everything, Lord. We just need to hear from you this morning, Father. Speak to our hearts, Lord. Open our ears this morning, Father, and let your word just come through in a mighty way this morning, Father. I pray that every heart in this room has changed this morning forever, Father. I pray that there are victories this morning. Father, I just pray. I thank you for your goodness, Lord. We thank you for your mercy. In the name of your son, Jesus. Now let's praise him, okay? Come on, I want you to sing with me this morning. Get this praise in your heart. Well, I raise the hallelujah. In the presence of my enemies, yes, I do. I raise a hallelujah, oh, louder than the unbelief. Sing it again, come on. I raise a hallelujah, my weapon is a melody, yes, it is. 
shout this morning he is so good father we praise you we bless your name this morning yes we do
And should this life bring suffering, Lord, I will remember, I'll remember it all, Father, what Calvary has bought for me, yes, both now and forever. Come on, church, sing out with all your heart. God, come on. You're so good. Come on, it's all you now. Sing it out. We sing, God, you're so good. We sing to you, Father. Oh, God, you're so Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for grace today. Thank you, Lord, that you brought us to this place. No one's here. None of us are here by accident. Lord, you lead us each and every day, and we're so thankful. This morning, we're thankful for your presence that's in this place this morning. We honor you and no one else. No one else is worthy of the glory. No one else is worthy of the praise and adoration. We thank you. We give you the praise. We give you the glory this morning. Father, we lift up our request before you. So many different needs across this room. We lift up those that are sick, those that are dealing with physical issues. We pray that you would touch their bodies. We pray that you'd bring healing this morning. Father, we lift up those that may be struggling with fear and anxiety, leading even to depression. We pray for those right now that may be dealing with these battles. In some ways, many of us are. God, help us to remember, help us to know that today you have not given us a spirit of fear. You've given us power. We understand your love and your acceptance. We understand that through your word, as we renew our minds in your word and through the Holy Spirit, we have a sound mind. Lord, help us to understand it. Help us to embrace it. We pray this morning for those that may be dealing with addiction of any level, whatever it may be. We pray that you would set captives free this morning. Break chains of bondage today, oh God, we pray. 
Lord, we lift up those that simply need direction and guidance in their lives, something that they're praying about, a decision that has to be made. We pray today that they would have an, an ear that would hear clearly what you're speaking. We pray as a church we would have discernment in our daily walk. <clears throat> That we would discern what is good and what is right, what is acceptable, what is pleasing and honoring to you. Oh, Holy Spirit, help us in this area. Help us to discern even spirits, as the scripture says, that we would know what is of God and what is not, what is of the enemy. Help us to avoid those things that are not of you. Help us to walk circumspectly, as your scripture says. In other words, with, with clarity with vision, with direction. Oh, Lord, help us in this hour how we need it. You are the light in the midst of darkness, and we thank you for that today. Lord, we lift up our brothers and sisters who are watching online and for, for whatever reason just aren't able to be with us in service. We pray for them, and we pray that you bless them and strengthen them and encourage them. Lord, in whatever they're dealing with, whatever is happening in their world we just pray your blessing and favor upon them Lord God this morning we lift up our community Southeast Indiana and we pray dear God that you would bring awakening to this area that multitudes would begin to see and know their need for Christ that many would be saved we pray for the church that we would be revived by the Holy Spirit today God use us in this hour it's our time to shine as you've called us and equipped us to do. We have power. We, we've been given power. We are blessed. We have the resources necessary. Help us never, ever to lose sight of that today, oh God. Lord, we bless your name. Lord, just as the song said, we want to just conclude with that in our prayer. Lord, you are good. You are good. And we thank you. You are a good God. You are so good. And you've been so good to us. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. And everyone said amen. Praise God. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. It's good to see you this morning. I'm glad you're here. Um, before we get into the sermon really quick, just a uh, quick announcement that we weren't able to get on the, uh, on the video announcements. We're going to be doing a baptism soon. Amen. And so, yeah, we've got a lot of folks who are asking. They, they want to be baptized. And so um, when a lot of people are asking to be baptized, that's when we know it's time to do a baptism. So we've, we've, we're, doing, we're revamping our uh, New Beginnings class. It's going to be coming out here soon. We'll be sharing with more about that later. But we're not, we're not going to ask you to go through the New Beginnings class. So you're going to get a special exemption um, if you're ready to be baptized. Um, no, seriously, if, 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 you, if you are here and you've given your heart to Christ and you have never been water baptized, now's your chance. You need to get signed up. There's a sign-up sheet um, in, in, the, uh, in the cafe at the welcome desk. Just go there. Give us your name, your contact information. We'll contact you. Um, it, may, it may be that I just give you a call and we talk a little bit just to make sure you understand what we're doing, what, it's, what is going on. Um, we're not going to set a date just yet. I'd like to get everyone signed up, see how many we have, and then try to set, set a schedule. But here in the next couple of weeks, we would love to do it. So if you've never been water baptized, now is your chance. Get signed up. If maybe, maybe when you were a child, I get this question a lot. I was, I was baptized as a child, but, but now it seems more meaningful to me. And so should I do it or shouldn't I? I would say to you, yes. It's, it's, if you feel like it's something that you, you want to do, that it's more meaningful to you now, you are, it's, there's nothing, there's, you're not, it's not going to hurt you if you get baptized twice. That's all I know. I don't know how to answer the question other than that. You're not, you're not going to harm anyone. God's not going to be angry at you, I don't believe. I don't see anywhere in Scripture. But it's baptism, water baptism, is an outward sign of what God has done inwardly. It's an outward sign of the work of the Holy Spirit, that you've been born again. So the only reason any of us should be water baptized is if we've been born again by the Spirit, right? We've accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior. So if that's you and you haven't done that, or maybe, maybe you did it, but when you did it when you were young, you really, you really weren't born again you just because you didn't even know what it meant. And now you are, well, you should be water baptized, okay? So get signed up. If you, if, before you leave today, you want to do that, sign up at the welcome desk or if you'll call in the office. 
we can get you on the list, and then we'll talk more and figure out when that's going to be, but it's going to be here very shortly. Amen? Praise God. Well, I don't know about you, but I had a fantastic week. Connect Conference 2020, I felt like, was, was phenomenal. <clears throat> For those of you that weren't able to join us, we, we totally understand. It, those services are online. I think it's basically just the sermons, if that's correct, but you can go back. You can check those out. I would, I would highly recommend checking out... Um, David Ham, fantastic Sunday morning. Bruce Deal, of course. Uh, John Morgan, and then and then of course Brother Yurton. Check those sermons out. Um, this this Sunday is always the most difficult Sunday for me to preach because we've just been we've been gospel stuffed all week. You've been hearing preaching now for four, you know four days. We had great speakers, all of this stuff. And so on Tuesday, on Tuesday while I was sitting there. Um, I felt like the Lord just gave me something, and so I love that because usually I'm like, I have no idea. What do I do? Do I just rehash everybody's sermon? How do I go? What do I, what do I preach? It's usually very difficult, but I felt like the Lord just spoke something into my spirit, and it, it was just, so that's what I'm going to do, right? I'm just going to listen to what God said, and so I felt like the Lord told me to encourage you. I'm just, I just want to encourage you. So this morning, the title of my sermon is A Word of exhortation. Now, the term exhortation or exhort, it's probably not a term that we use a lot, but biblically, it just literally means to incite by argument or advice or to urge strongly, but, but it's, it, it's an interchangeable word, and so often it's a word in Scripture that's used to mean encourage or to, it's encouragement. So, sometimes the reality is we just, we just need a little encouragement. I don't, know, I don't know about you, but I think we're kind of in that season, don't you, where we just... We just need to be lifted up. We need, I was, the, the other day I was with some pastors and we were talking and, and, and just a lot of things and we're talking about what's going on, just like probably you are, what's happening in government, what's happening in society, what's going on in the church. And finally one of the pastors just spoke up and he says, can, can somebody just give me some good news? And I thought, I thought yeah, that's kind of how I feel as well. Don't you feel that way at times? And so this morning we're just going to we're just going to talk about some good things. There are times when we need warned, and there are times when we need admonished or corrected, but then there's other times where we just need a little bit of encouragement, and that's what I want to do today. I want you to turn in your Bible to 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 1 through 10. Now, here's what you've got to understand. Paul the apostle often did this. You know, we're, it's, for me, especially, my tendency is to look for in Scripture things that will correct or admonish. I'm, I'm totally fine with God's Word correcting me, with, with seeing things that maybe I don't line up with in Scripture and saying, man, i got to work on that. But sometimes I pass over the, the encouraging things. And, and, and what's amazing as I begin to look at this week is that often the, the gospel writers, men anointed of God, the apostles, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, they would begin their letters with words of encouragement. And so often we'll just, we just read by it because we think, well, that's just, that's just, he's just doing that. It's just fluff. It really doesn't mean anything. He's just doing that to start the letter. Listen to me. There's no fluff in the word of God. There's nothing in this Bible that we should just pass over. It's all good, every bit of it. And so we're just going to look and see that Paul, as he begins to write this letter to the church at Thessalonica, he just begins to encourage them. And so I'm going to be reading from the New Living Translation this morning, if that's okay. Follow with me in whatever version you have, but listen to, to what the Apostle Paul says, verses 1 through 10. This letter is from Paul, Silas, and Timothy. We are writing to the church in Thessalonica, to you who belong to God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. May God give you grace and peace. We always thank God for all of you and pray for you constantly. As we pray to our God and Father about you, we think of your faithful work, your loving deeds, and the enduring hope you have because of our Lord Jesus Christ. We know, dear brothers and sisters, that God loves you and has chosen you to be his own people. For when we brought you the good news, it was not only with words, but also with power. For the Holy Spirit gave you full assurance that what we said was true. And you know our concern for you from the way we lived when we were with you. So you received the message with joy from the Holy Spirit in spite of the severe suffering that it brought you. In this way, you imitated both us and the Lord. And as a result, 
You have become an example to the believers in Greece throughout both Macedonia and Achaia. And now the word of the Lord is ringing out from you to people everywhere, even beyond Macedonia and Achaia. For wherever we go, we find people telling us about your faith in God. We don't need to tell them about it, for they keep talking about the wonderful welcome that you gave us and how you turned away from idols to serving the living and true God. And they speak of how you were looking forward to the coming of God's Son from heaven. Jesus, whom God raised from the dead, he is the one who has rescued us from the terrors of the coming judgment. Could you consider for just a moment how much that must have encouraged the church at Thessalonica? Think about it. This is the brand new infant church, and they're going through a very difficult season. Paul addresses it. He says, you've received the message even though you're facing persecution. And yet, here, are the, here is this very first chapter. The entire chapter of this letter to the church is nothing but encouragement. And Paul is telling them, it's, listen, you're doing a good job. Now, listen to me. One of my weaknesses is that I don't often tell people enough how good of a job they're doing. And so this morning, as your pastor, I just want to tell you, you're doing an amazing job. You are an amazing church. I'm not just trying. Listen to me. If you've been here long enough, you know that I'm not just the happy, glue, everything great guy. I'm the guy that will tell you just like it is. But I know what I heard the Holy Spirit speak to me this week. And I've come to tell you, you're doing a great job. In fact, as I look over this first chapter, I begin to realize that much of what Paul is saying to the Thessalonians, he could say to you and I today in this church. And so what I've done is I've listed a few things and what I'm just going to call characteristics of a healthy church, or, or maybe if you would just allow me to indulge for a minute, say, characteristics of the bridge of hope. Listen to what he says first. Paul addresses his letter to those who belong to God, the Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Men and women of God, brothers and sisters today, you belong to God. You are first and foremost a citizen of heaven. While you're watching the things that you have, have, have been a part of for years, as you've watched those things begin to crumble, even the nation that we love, as we find these things beginning to fall short in every aspect, rest assured, Church of Jesus Christ, you belong to God and you are citizens of heaven. Come on, give God praise. It is time for you to lift your head, square your shoulders, walk with faith and courage. Don't be afraid. You are in the hands of God Almighty today. You belong to God. Come on, just look at someone and tell them, you belong to God. You belong to the Father. You're in His hands. Number two, Paul says, he addresses in the second verse, he said, listen to what he said. He said, while we were praying for you, these are the things that came to our mind. I don't know if that was the Holy Spirit or not, but there's a good chance. How many of you know that when we sit down to pray, we have a helper in prayer? His name is Holy Spirit. He helps us in prayer. And clearly, as Paul is praying for this particular church, some things begin to come to his mind. The one thing that he said that came to his mind was the faithful work. I have never been around a more faithful group of people in my life than the people of this church. You are a faithful people. You are dedicated to the work of God. You show up when you need to show up. You're not afraid to work. You get the job done. You're willing to change and adapt. You, this morning, are doing a faithful work just like the church at Thessalonica. You're doing it, and you're doing it well. You are faithful. I know many times from the pulpit you hear about you need to be more faithful and you need to be more obedient and you need to do more. You need to be more. But I just want to tell you today, you are faithful and it's evident in the faithful work that is taking place from this congregation. This is not my work. This is not, this is not our work. This is the body of Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit, through faithful men and 
and women of God. Listen to me. Paul told Timothy, take the words that I teach you. Take the word of God that I put in you and place it into the hands of faithful men so that they can teach others. That is taking place in this house, and you should feel good about it. Give God praise in his house. The other thing that comes to his mind is is the loving deeds of the church. I have watched over years as the people of this church love on new people that walk through the door. I am not ashamed to say that at this church, it doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter how you dress. It doesn't matter how you smell. It doesn't matter what background you've had. You are loved and welcomed in this house as evidenced by the people that worship here. But it's not just an emotion. It's not just something that we do. We don't just welcome people. We walk alongside people. Many of you have walked alongside those that are hurting. You have bared the burdens of your brothers and sisters. You've talked with them on the phone. You've sat with them at coffee. You've encouraged them in the lobby. lobby. These are loving actions, loving deeds. They're not just emotions. Your love has been revealed in action. I watch as you come for food pantry and celebrate recovery and youth ministries and small group ministries. Why? Because you love God and you love people. It's not just a t-shirt. It's a culture. It's a mentality. It is a work that the Holy Spirit has done in each of our lives. It's the same thing that was happening in the church of Thessalonica, and it's happening here The other thing that he saw through prayer was he saw he was reminded of this church's enduring hope. Because you have your eyes on Jesus Christ this morning, you have an enduring hope. I got to thinking and I became emotional this week as I was thinking about many of your stories. How many of you in this room have been through the fire? You have been through the flood. You've had cancer diagnosis. You've had situations with your families where there's been splits. Your hearts have been broken. You've you've lost jobs. You've been through the fire. You've been through the flood. Your family has suffered. You've been against hell itself has risen against you. Just when everyone thought you were finished, though, you refused to lay down. You got knocked down, but you refused to stay there. Why? Because you have an enduring hope. The power of Christ resides and dwells within you. I've never been around a more enduring people in my life. A people that will go through fire and go through flood. You'll you'll pray together and cry together. You'll walk in brokenness. And yes, you have seasons of disappointment. And yes, you have seasons of depression. And yes, there are times when you are battling fear. But through it all, through it all, you've kept your eyes on God. There is an enduring hope that is inside of you that nothing of this world can shake. You have your eyes on the hope and promise of Christ. The power of Christ has lifted you as you have refused to give up and quit. I believe that in this church there is a group of people that believe the words of Jesus Christ when he said those who endure to the end, they will be the ones that receive the reward. There's a precious hope that's inside of us. And you know that one day, oh God, let me say it to you, like a pastor from his heart, you know that one day it will be worth every bit of what you're going through now. Yes, weeping may endure for a season, but joy comes in the morning. There is an enduring hope. You've got your eyes on Christ. You've been willing as a church to lay hold of the anchor of your soul, Jesus Christ. He goes on to say that This church received the message, the message with joy. And one of the things that astounds me the most about this church, and maybe the thing that I'm the most proud about, is that this is a church who will receive any message that they recognize and know to be from the Holy Spirit. If it's from the Holy Spirit, this church will receive it. And I believe you do it because you recognize the true gospel. I'm proud to say today that This people, you recognize the true gospel. You know the power of the gospel. I believe without question the Holy Spirit is building a discernment in this people 
that will help us to stand in the last days while deception runs rampant through the church of Jesus Christ. There is going to be a people right here in southeast Indiana who have tasted of God and have tasted of his word and they know the true from the false and they're not going to be willing to accept anything less. Yes, there are counterfeit gospels. We know that. There are counterfeit prophets and counterfeit preachers. And Jesus said clearly in the last days they would abound. But they will not be allowed to enter into our ranks because we know the gospel and we're not ashamed of the gospel and we know the power that it's able to bring in our lives and in the lives of our community. Somebody give God praise in his house. We've watched as simple men and simple women have just broke open the word of God and begin to teach God's word and pray God's word and trust God's word. And we've watched as this gospel, this powerful word of God that's true from cover to cover has broken chains and set people free and brought them into freedom. We acknowledge and recognize and have received the true message from the Holy Spirit. I'm here to tell you that that's not happening in every church in America. That's the reality. I wish it wasn't true, but it is. I've said often, and I kind of say it half-heartedly or jokingly, but I mean it. I couldn't preach in every church in America. I'm not sure that I could preach in many churches in Ripley County. The people that sit in those churches in many cases wouldn't accept. I'm not saying they're not good people. They're, they're great people. They're godly people. We'll be to heaven together. We'll have to talk about it then. But I'm not so sure that everyone who comes into a church is willing to hear the good with the bad. You see, Paul said in the last days there's going to be a people that rise and all they really want is for their ears to be tickled. All, all, they, all they really want is some sort of form of entertainment. All they really want is, is, is what appeases and satisfies their own flesh and their own desires. They're going to be deceived. And, and I'm thankful today that I'm part of a congregation that's willing to hear whatever comes from the pulpit as long as it's the word of God. And I, I rest today that if I, if I died tonight and another man stood behind this pulpit and he came with another gospel, I know that you wouldn't endure it. I know you wouldn't take it. You'd run him out. You'd run his family out. You'd say, not here, not in this house, not under our watch. Because we know what the true gospel is. And we know the power of the gospel. And we know the power of the cross. And we're not willing to endure it. You're not sitting in your homes watching foolishness. You're not sending your money to foolish charlatans on TV because you know the power of the gospel. You have a discernment that only God could do, that only God could bring. Now, the result of all of this, look what he says. The sixth verse, he says, you've received the message with joy. And he said, in this way, you've um, Im imitated the Lord. And as a result, as a result, you've become an example. I want you to know today, whether you realize it or not, you as a church are being an example to the body of Christ. You. Every one of you in this room, as a church, you are being an example to the church of Jesus Christ of how it should look. Of how it should be. You give an example day in and day out of what a true body of Christ really looks like. And whether you realize it or not, people from all over are hearing about it. Pastors and church leaders tell me time and time again what an amazing church this is. We've had people this week from New York City and Atlanta and Chicago and Kentucky, and not one of them has hesitated to grab me and look me in the eyes and say, you have no idea what you have here. They're not just giving me platitudes, folks. I know platitudes. I know when someone says, oh boy, you look good today, and it's not really true. <laughs> Come on, so do you. <laughs> but I've had men of God this week from amazing churches, churches that I've looked up to Church, David Ham from Times Square Church, he looked me in the eye over and over and he says, Pastor, you have an amazing people. A man of a different 
background, a different culture, a different color, and he walks into the house of God, and you welcomed him. Why? Because he represented the kingdom of God. He, rep- he was your brother. He was your family. And it wasn't just because of that. This is what an amazing church, what an amazing presence of God. John Morgan, you may not have liked this style. You may have liked this style, but it doesn't matter. This man came in from Chicago, and he's part of all of this stuff. And he says, what an amazing church. Time and time again, whenever people come, and they walk among you, and they're not among us. They're just they're, they're from other places. And they walk among us, and they say, what an amazing group of people. What a great church this is. I'm beginning to get more and more calls now from other pastors asking the question, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, that's, I kind of laugh too. I think I have. <laughs> what is it, pastor? Tell me, what, what's, what are you doing? I had it this week. I had a pastor in tears. And listen, I've tried this. I, I've, I've, I've worked on my worship team. I've done this. I've done that. I've, I've tried to be more young people. I, followed, I, I saw such and such teachings. I followed the, what, what are you doing? He said, I just can't get it. I said, he said, I walk into the congregation and the power of God's there. P- the people love each other. There's unity. They're welcoming. They worship together. What is it? How are you doing this? What, 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 what are you doing? Just give me, the, give me the secret sauce. Tell me the ingredients and I'll do it. Folks, that doesn't just happen. It's you. It's the body of Christ. It's your willingness to embrace the cross and Christ and the word of God. It's it's your willingness to hear the teaching of God and obey and honor the word of God. And through that, the Holy Spirit has built something here that, that quite frankly, I just can't explain. I I feel totally inadequate. I I don't... they get, they're disappointed. I'm, t- I'm going to be quite honest. I'm saying, I don't know. I, I can't give you exact. If you want to talk about specifics, we'll talk specifics. You want to talk about a certain area, I can give you some things that we've done. But if you think that's going to fix your problems, you're crazy. I said, I said look, I said, we, we have people that love God. We, we preach the word. We honor the word. We look to lift up Christ. And I said, God has built this here. Well, it's not built by man. It's not, it's, we haven't done it. God has used us. But here's the reality, folks. Whether, there's no other way to look at it. The truth is that God only builds his church through faithful and obedient people. You are the people. Come on, I said, you are those people. It's you. They're, they're, I don't care how anointed a pastor is. You can preach the pain off the wall. But if you're preaching to an obstinate group of people who aren't going to listen and who don't care and who are complaining and bickering about everything, it means nothing. It doesn't matter. It's just a guy preaching really good. You can have an amazing leader. But if people aren't willing to follow, it doesn't matter. Have you ever heard that, right? You think you're a leader until you look around and see how many people are following. If no one's following, you're not a leader. And so we've got people that are willing to obey their pastor. They're willing to honor his choices and decisions. Are they always right? No, I know that many of you have looked. And I know many of you have questioned and said, I'm not sure if this is right. And I remember seasons where you probably thought I had two heads. And you thought, who is he here? He's hearing a voice, but I don't know which voice. And and yet there was something in your heart. And you said, I'm going to trust him. And I'm going to trust the pastor. I'm going to trust that he does hear from God. And because of that, we are where we are today. It's because of you. It's because of what you have done. The result is you are an example. An example to the churches. And I'm telling you, I can't help but believe that in the days ahead, that's going to even get greater. I mean it. Don't be surprised if in the future you don't see pastors coming in and sitting in and just watching. And watching you. And when you do, don't act goofy. Just act your be Just be normal. (laughs) Just be just like you are. Like it's, I know I'm being emotional, but just be just like you are. Just be just like you are. It's good enough. You're good enough. What you're doing is good enough. You are an example to the body of Christ. Come on. The next thing he says this, he says, now, because of all of this, you're an example, and the word of the Lord is ringing out from you to people everywhere. People are talking about your faith. 
Folks, that's happening in this church. God's word is ringing out from this people. I know that. It's, it's not just me and, and, and television or the internet or whatever it is. It's not just the Wednesday devotions, you know, where, where I sit on the patio with sunglasses. It's, 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 it's you. It's, it's you taking the word to your workplace and to your families. It's, it's you in your faithful giving. You know, we don't, we don't do like a lot of churches do. I don't get up here every week and give you a report of where your money goes. Thank God for that. I'm going to be honest. But I want to tell you today, anyone's, by the way, anyone's welcome to see it if you want to see it. We're not hiding anything. I'm just telling you, the money that comes in here, it goes out. We are sending hundreds and hun- we're sending hundreds of thousands of dollars, over $100,000 a year out to ministries and people in need. And we're helping people in our local community. The word of God is going forth. Your giving, your faithfulness. You didn't know we were going to take an offering Tuesday night. We gave Bruce Deal, City of Refuge, $7,000. You didn't even know what you were doing. I, 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 Bruce Deal gets, get, Bruce Deal gets $10 million checks. You hear him like, it's like candy. I don't even know how it works, but whatever. And, and he looked at the check. He didn't know what it was. And he walked out and then he came back and I, Charlotte saw it. It was, there was this joy in his heart. He just couldn't believe it. He said, I can't believe this, but look at this check. And he was, he was thrilled. And he got me again and he said, what an amazing people you have here. What an amazing group of people. The word of God is going out of this house. People everywhere are hearing and seeing the word of God because of you. Children in El Salvador are being taught the word of God. I don't know if you realize this, but you pay for the education, the Christian education of 14 or 15 children in El Salvador that are orphans every year. You pay for that. You pay for widows and orphans to be taught the word of God to be fed all over the world. You pay for pastors to be trained. You gave money for pastors who were hurting during the COVID-19. What Dale Yurton was talking about, we gave a large donation for that. It was your money. It was your funds. But here's what's the great thing about it is you don't question that. You don't give to that even. You give to Christ. You do what the Bible says. You say, I know it. I see it. I know it. I'm not just speaking this. When you write your tithe check and you write your giving offering, whatever it is, you're not giving to me. You're not giving to Bridge of Hope. You're not giving to Dale Yurton. You're not giving to... You are giving as unto God himself, and you are trusting that God will take care of it from there. And I want to tell you that he is. God is taking care of it. God is blessing. His word is going forth. I want you to turn to 1 Peter quickly. I meant this to be a quick sermon. First Peter 1 through 8, let's read it. This letter is from Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ. I'm writing to God's chosen people who are living as foreigners in the provinces of Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. God the Father knew and chose you long ago. Folks, listen to me. God ordained that this church would be here long ago. Long before I ever existed, long before you were ever walking the earth, God in his heart knew that he would raise a testimony in southeast Indiana. And that's now you and I. God the Father knew you and he chose you long ago and his spirit has made you holy and as a result you have obeyed him and you've been cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. May God give you more and more grace and peace. Now this... These letters are totally different, folks. One was written by the Apostle Paul. One was written by the Apostle Peter. One was sent to the church at Thessalonica. This one, of course, is sent as a universal to the church. But listen to what he says. Paul said, may God give you grace and peace. And then Peter says, may God give you more and more grace and peace. That's my prayer for you today. That God, because of what you are and who you are, will give you more and more grace and peace. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by his great mercy that we have been born again because God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Now we live with great expectation and we have a priceless inheritance, an inheritance that is kept in heaven for you. Pure, undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay, and through your faith, God is protecting you 
by his power until you receive this salvation, which is ready to be revealed on the last day for all to see. So be truly glad. There is wonderful joy ahead. There's wonderful joy ahead, even though you have to endure many trials for a little while. These trials will show that your faith is genuine, that it's being tested as fire tests and purifies gold, though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many so when your faith remains strong through many trials it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world you love him even though you've never seen him though you do not see him now you trust him and you rejoice with a glorious and inexpressible joy the reward for trusting him will be the salvation of your souls This letter's to you. This is from Christ. This is from the Holy Spirit to you. God is speaking. Folks, you have a precious inheritance now. I'm telling you. Sure as I'm alive, God's word is speaking to you. You. I pray that you leave with your head high today. I pray that you'd leave encouraged. I pray that you would know deep in your soul, deep in your inner man, that there's a precious inheritance for you. And it's kept by God himself. No rust or moth or thieves can touch it. The government won't put their hands on it. It won't perish. It won't get old over time. It is kept by God. And it's waiting for you. It's waiting for you. It's there. No one will touch it. It's waiting for you. Don't get weary. Don't give up. Keep pressing on. Because there is an amazing and priceless inheritance that waits for you. Now he says in the fifth verse that through your faith, God is protecting you. And I want you to know that this morning as well. That through your faith, God is also protecting you. I know you're hearing fear now on every side. Every news outlet is purpur purporting fear. Society wants you to live in fear. But I'm telling you that that is not God's will. I understand using wisdom. I'm not advocating anything other than that. Wash your hands. Stay away from a virus. Do whatever you can. But do not be led by fear. Because when you are in God's will, you are in the safest place on earth. He goes on to say, be truly glad. I would to God that God, through this sermon and through this word of encouragement today, would bring a little bit of gladness into your heart. I don't know about you, but I need it. Just a little bit of gladness. The world's not caving in. It's not falling apart. It's in the hands of an amazing, loving, and caring, supernatural, sovereign God. He orders your steps. He guides your path. Everything, everything, everything is under his control. So be glad. Be glad today and rejoice. Now I want to close with a little bit of admonition if you'll go to the fifth verse quickly, we're going to close as they come. They can come to sing. Yeah, it's still early. Good. First Peter chapter 5, verse 6. With all that was said, here's what you should do. Humble yourselves under the mighty power of God. In other words, I'm not speaking this to make you feel arrogant or boastful. I don't feel boastful today. I hope you can see that. This isn't fake. I don't like to cry in front of people. This isn't a false humility. It isn't 
It isn't a boasting. It isn't a saying, oh, well, we're better than the other church. I, I don't know about it. I just know this. I know what God's put on my heart for you. And I know that the response from, from you and I should be a response of humility. An honest sense and desire to even do more for the kingdom of God and for the people around us. Humble yourselves under the mighty power of God. And at the right time, he will lift you up in honor. Give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Remember that your Christian brothers and sisters all over the world are going through the same kind of suffering that you are. In his kindness, God called you to share in his eternal glory by means of Christ Jesus. So after you have suffered a little while, he will restore, support, and strengthen you, and he will place you on a firm foundation. All power to him forever. Amen. Would somebody say amen and give God praise? So here's how we close stay humble, stay alert. Don't get caught in the enemy's traps. Stand firm and don't back down. Keep being who you are in Christ. Do not let this world conform you and put you into its mold. You have been redeemed. You have been purchased. You have the power of Christ inside of you. You have no reason to be ashamed of that power. You have no reason to be ashamed of the gifts and power and operation of the Holy Spirit. He lives and dwells inside of you. Stand firm. Don't back down. Don't apologize for the word of God. Don't apologize for the truths of this scripture that you and I stand for. And keep building the kingdom. And God will take care of the rest. Let's stand.